Okay, this is step response of a RL circuit. So step response in general, just to review, we have what happens is we have an initial equilibrium state we, we call x sub zero, and then we have a final uh, equilibrium state, x of final, and there's a e response, e to the minus t by tau times some, some constant. And they can either go down like that or they can go up like that. Um, so mm, this remi reminds people sometimes of digital circuits that have a square wave where you have these are zeros and ones, but really they're a low voltage and a high voltage signal. And they, we want them to be as square as possible, but they're not really square They because there's some capacitance or inductance in the circuit. So they, they really have a little, you know, curvy part here to these things. And we, we, so we want to minimize the capacitance and inductance, which we call reactance, by the way. We want to minimize that so we can get this thing as square as possible. So let's see. So a couple of things are going to happen in here. There's going to be some circuit and there's going to be an energizing part on the left and then it'll reach a x sub zero state from this. Then we'll throw some switch and it'll reach some final equilibrium state with the circuit on the on the right. Um, and yeah there's something else I can't think of right now but that's basically what we're going to do. So here's a circuit 24 volt, 2 ohm, this little weird switch right here, a 10 ohm resistor, 8 ohm, 8 amp, sorry, current source. Then we have our inductor in here. Now we have this switch that is thrown at T equals 0 to this new position. So the left-hand side of the circuit is the energizing circuit. This will get us to X sub zero. The right-hand side is the is an, is another powered circuit, which will produce some other equilibrium state, X sub final. So it, it's, it's not, this differs from natural response in that it doesn't go down to zero. It goes from one state to another, it could go up or down because both sides of the circuit are powered. So this switch, the reason it has this overlap in here is because to prevent arcing, because the current in an inductor, I doesn't like to step change suddenly. It can't do that. So it would try and jump over an arc and produce a very high voltage to, to try and jump this arc. And uh, arcing is usually bad. It uh, wears circuits out. Uh, it moves metal from one side of the contact to the other, and it's dangerous. So we don't like arcing. So we have this overlap so that it's the circuit is never uh, not connected to, to nothing, or that is, there's never an air gap. And it's only on this overlapping part for a little, very brief period, so it doesn't, we just ignore its effects on the circuit of the effect of it being connected to both sides at the same time. that ha That's very quick, so we just ignore it. Anyway, that's an important concept to think about when you're working with inductors or with circuits in general. Motors, uh, solenoid switches, lots of things have inductance in them. And when you disconnect them from the circuit, you have to control the arcing somehow. So that happens a lot. All right. So um, this is what we're trying to find trying to find mm, we're trying to find uh, the initial current I at zero we're trying to find V at zero plus and I want to find V at zero minus there is going to be a step change in here for V let's find both of those and that, let's find tau Let's find I as a function of time for T greater than zero. Let's find V as a function of time for T greater than zero. All right. 
these things up to here are pretty straightforward. Now this one is going to be a little bit different. So this one here, we're going to find various ways. We could find, we know that V equals Li prime. So if we're going to find I of T, we could find V of T just like that. We also, there's another method I'm going to show you where we can use KCL and, and Ohm's law to, to find that. So, so that's what I forgot to tell you. I remember now. So when you solve these step response problems, there's, there's three steps to this thing. You solve it at T equals minus infinity. And this will give you, this will give you X sub zero, the, the steady state initial response. Then you find it at T equals zero. And this will give you the resistance, the equivalent resistance, which basically gives you um, tau, the time constant for this for the exponential part. And then you find that at t equals positive infinity, and this gives you x sub final. And then we have our we have our general solution, x as a function of time. In this case, we're solving for i, but anyway, x as a function of time is the um, it's x sub uh, x sub final plus x sub initial minus x sub final times e to the minus t by tau. And in this case, our x is going to be t because we're doing an inductor. All right. If we were doing a capacitor, if we were doing a capacitor, we'd be solving for for v of t with this general solution. So the first thing to do is solve this, is draw the circuit for t equals minus infinity, or t is much, much less than zero. So at that point, the circuit looks like this. The inductor at that point appears to be a wire because it's, we're talking about steady state here, and that's what inductors do. And the voltage across this thing, so the voltage at zero minus, right, the voltage just before the switch is thrown, thrown is going to be zero because I is going to be constant and the derivative of I is zero. The derivative of a constant is zero. So at just before the switch is thrown at, z, at zero minus, the voltage across this inductor will be zero. So it's acting like a wire. It has a has zero voltage across it and all the current through it. That's that's how we model an ideal conductor, a wire. So um, I heard somewhere that I equals V over R. I think some guy named Ohm said that. So we can solve for um, our first quantity I, our first um, uh, signal I sub, sub zero. So just to play with these notations, I at zero is the same as I at zero plus, which is the same as I at zero for an inductor, because there's not going to be a step change in these things. If there's not going to be a step change in 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 current for an inductor, so this these are all the same. So I at, at zero is just it's 24 over two V over R. It's 24 volts pushing through this two two ohm circuit gives you I. It's that's 12 amps. Okay, that's our first answer. Okay, then uh, then we want to solve this at uh, we want to solve the circuit at t equals zero. So at t equals zero, the switch is thrown. The inductor sort of the, the inductor's response becomes a time response. So it's not a wire anymore. It's it's producing a a response that's that is a function of time. Um, so it's it looks like this. The circuit looks like this. And um, I is here. This is two. Oh, I forgot. This is 200 milli, milli henries. Yeah. 200 milli henries. V is still in there, plus minus. Okay. So at... Um, so this is right after the switch was thrown, and at this point, we can find V by realizing that there are 
um, realizing that the voltage across this 10 ohm resistor is the same as the voltage across the inductor because they're in parallel. So uh, the voltage across this resistor, we could get that if we knew the current through it. And we can get the current through it because we know that this 8 amp source is going through here. And at zero, the uh, inductor is putting out 12 amps. So this guy has 20 amps in it. So it's there's a voltage. Um, so let's see, the voltage across the 10 ohm resistor just by Ohm's law is 12 plus 8 times 10. This is I R. It's uh, it's 200 volts. But the voltage V has opposite polarity of the voltage um, that you would expect being generated by these currents. So, like this 20 amps, if it was going up, it would be it would have this polarity plus minus, which um, the current is going up. What's physically happening? The the 20 amps is going up, so it's going to produce this polarity this positive to negative polarity. But our reference polarity, the, the polarity, the, I'm sorry, our reference voltage, the voltage we're interested in has opposite polarity of that. So basically V equals minus V 10, 10 ohms. So, um, so V equals minus 200. You just got to throw in a, a 200 there to, to, um, um, you know, to make it work. It's another one of those confusing negative sign issues that comes up. So that is that is V at zero plus. We found V at zero minus, it was zero, and now we found V at zero plus. It jumps. When the switch is thrown, the voltage across this jumps up as, as the, jumps up to 200 or down to 200 volts as the inductor starts discharging. So that's uh, our second answer, V at zero plus. The um, next thing they're asking for is, is tau. So for so for for tau, you, you need the you need R equivalent, and um, tau is is L over R for an inductor circuit. And so we just need R equivalent. And this is basically, it's the Thevenin equivalent. So uh, like if I label these A, B, where the inductor is, and just pretend the inductor's not there and just do the, um, do the uh, open eyes, short Vs, resistor simplification. So I'm gonna open this, this, uh, this guy up. So it's just 10 ohms. So it's so R R is 10 ohms. But if there were more resistors in here, then you would just use the basically the find the Thevenin and equivalent resistance seen by the inductor. Okay, that's that's what we're doing here to find R. So now we can get tau. So tau is L over R. It's um, 200 millihenries over 10 ohms, it's 20 milliseconds. That's tau, that's our another answer. All right, so this was basically the um, equivalent resistance seen from the terminals AB using our Thevenin and equivalent methods from chapter four. All right, so for I of T, we need to, um, we need to find the, circuit at our third state, which is positive infinity. So at positive infinity, the inductor, once again, is behaving as if it were a wire, because the current in it will reach a constant state. So if it's a wire, then it's basically sh shorting out this 
resistor that's in here. So the resistor, the, the, re, the effect of the resistor goes away because it's being shorted out. All right, so um, we need to know I final, and then we can use our general solution. And just by looking at this thing, you can see that I final is going to be minus 8 amps. Okay, because there's 8 amps going around through this thing here, through the inductor, which is behaving like a wire now. So we have our general solution, X of T equals X of... Um, X sub X sub X sub final um, a plus uh, X at zero or X initial minus X sub final times e to the minus t by tau. So in this case, we're solving for I of t and uh, I sub final is minus eight amps plus. Um, the initial current in this thing was 12 amps and um, minus the final current which is minus 8 e to the minus t by um, 0.020 seconds. So cleaning that up you get minus 8 plus 20 e to the minus 50 t amps for t greater than or equal to 0. It's I, sub t it's I of t. That's our I of T. So to find um, the next thing we need to find is is V of T, and let's do it this way here. The voltage in an in an inductor is given by L I prime. So um, we just use V equals L I prime. So, so we're trying to find V of T. What is V of T? And we'll use this V of. Um, it turns out to be, you know, pretty easy. So, V V of T, V of T is just L. Two hundred millihenries, and then I prime. So derivative of eight is zero, and the derivative of twenty e to the minus fifty T is minus 50, 20 e to the minus 50 t, which is just minus 200 e to the minus 50 t volts for t greater than equal to zero. So we have these, um, we have these i as a function of time and v as a function of time. Let's graph them. So um, I, so I, uh, 20 minus 8 is 12, so it starts out at 12, and then it decays down to minus 8. So it's asymptotic to, mi to minus 8. And then V is it's zero at before the switch is thrown because the inductor is behaving like a wire. You throw the switch and the voltage immediately uh, dr drops. It immediately becomes minus 200 and then decays down to zero again. So the minus 200 just means that our you know, it's our polarity reference plus minus is just should be the other way around for for t greater than zero. So that's the solution. Now, for extra fun, we can also find uh, v of t via KCL and Ohm's law. Okay, so let's do that. So. Um, Let's draw the uh, circuit at um, at t equals zero. This this guy here. I'm just going to re redraw it with some different um, labels. So we have our inductor, which is discharging through this circuit on the right, 
or rather, I should say, the inductor's trying to reach a new equilibrium with the circuit on the on the right. It it, it does end up discharging. It it just has some. The inductor initially has this much energy in it, or the energy associated with twelve amps. Then it discharges down to zero amps. So at that point, it has zero energy in it. And then it starts, the current starts going the other direction, but it's still, it begins charging up again. So it's discharging down energy down to here and then charging up with energy. Because remember, energy will, is proportional to I squared. So the square makes it positive energy again, even though the current's going the opposite direction. So anyway, this guy is discharging, yes, to this other circuit, and then it'll start charging up again as the current starts going in the other direction. But um, this is, let's see, so here's V, and I'm gonna, yeah, there's V, use the same polarity, that's fine, and this is, you know, I of T, and this is I of T, and then there's eight coming this way. So let's call this here, let's call this I in the 10 ohm. This is a 10 ohm. So if let's call this node A. So if we do K if we do KCL at node A, then the I in the in the 10 ohm is these two guys, right? It's I of T plus eight. So that uh, I of T is uh, this thing over here, it's minus eight plus 20 e to the minus 50 t, and then plus this eight over here. So cleaning that up, you get, let's see the eights. Mm, yeah, the eights cancel and you just get 20 e to the minus 50 t. All right, then we can do Ohm's law at the 10 ohm. So V equals IR, right? So the voltage at the um, well, there's V, and then there's V at the 10 ohm, which would have this polarity plus to minus, given this I at the 10 ohm. So how should I write that? V equals minus V at the 10 ohm. And then we can plug in Ohm's law there, right? So uh, I R, you know? So I is 20 to the minus 50 T and R is 10. So this is gonna be minus uh, 200 E to the minus 50 T. It's so the same answer. So t greater than zero. Same answer. Two hundred and then decaying to zero. Same as uh, same as using v equals li prime. We could use KCL and Ohm's law.